Hi there, I'm John Levensold, and this is part nine of a wonderful little series on advanced MySQL usage for KillerPHP.com. And in this part nine, what I'm going to be doing is looking at MySQL search. So basically, how we can leverage MySQL's search engine. Now, I'm not going to be building on the existing tutorial that was set up in the previous uh, parts of this particular uh, video tutorial series, but rather we're going to start with something completely different. And that's only because uh, we're going to be dealing with something that requires just a lot of content. Um, and I'm going to show you various searching techniques that you can use. One is full text search using MySQL's search engine. And the other one is just using the like clause and various where queries and seeing what that what that gives you. Um, just to note, what I'm going to be doing during this tutorial is I'm just going to log in here and we'll say show tables. I've got a whole bunch of tables here in my KPHP uh, database right now. And I'm just going to start by dropping all these tables. Drop table author. Oh, drop table post. Drop table author. Drop table it's actually a view, but I don't think it's going to get mad at me if I say drop table post count. Oh, drop view post count, drop view post with authors, and drop view published posts. And now we are left with a pristine empty database, which we are now going to fill with Shakespearean sonnets. Uh, the reason being that there are just there's a lot of words there, and we can probably get some semblance of an interesting search result out of that. So to start off, I am going to create a new text file, and this is going to be called uh, MySQL Search. SQL. And this time around, I'm going to reference my post table. And I'm going to drop if table exists. I think, or yeah, drop table if exists. Drop table if exists for a table called sonnet. And here I'm just going to say create table sonnet. And we're going to have in the sonnet table, we're just going to have a title. And we're going to have ta we're going to have content, which is going to be text content in this case. And I'm just going to have those very two small columns. Now, something that I need to mention right off the bat is that searching with MySQL requires that you use a different database engine. In the first video, I talked about the advantages of using InnoDB, primarily that you can create foreign key constraints. You can constrain the keys of your database so that if you've got two tables that are related to each other, a modification in one isn't going to cause integrity issues in another. Now, unfortunately, MySQL search engine only works with MyESAM, which is an older database engine, um, and it doesn't look like there is a really good solution for leveraging MySQL search uh, if you're not using MyESAM. Some people have uh, devised a way of basically using triggers, which uh, are another part of MySQL, whereby they create copies of their InnoDB tables, and they create what are called shadow tables, which are the equivalent, but they're using MyESAM. And that's more of an implementation kind of problem than a educational design problem. So I'm going to avoid showing you how to set up set shadow tables and all of that, at least in this tutorial series. So for now, we're just going to insert some text into our sonnet table. So I'm going to have insert into sonnet, and I'm going to have title and content, values, and for now I'm going to say sonnet one, and I'll just I'm going to use double quotes because the source I'm using is going to have some single quotes, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not exactly sure how many sonnets we're going to take. Let's just say we're going to take 11 sonnets. Uh, before I go further, I'm just going to select all of this. 
and then paste it. And it looks like I'm getting errors. Create table sonnet, primary key, auto increment, content. Looks like this is okay, but it's saying you have a syntax error. Oh, I forgot my semicolon here. That's why. It's very important to have the semicolon to end your statements. Hit enter again, star from sonnet, and I'm going to have all my sonnets and absolutely zero content. Notice, by the way, that this is empty as opposed to null. So this is also can be a point of confusion when you're starting out with MySQL or any database engine, is that empty or having a zero string length and having a null value mean two separate things to a database. So for example, if you wanted to do something with a Boolean where you have true or false, if something is not set, then it's null and you end up with uh, trinary logic where you can have something that's true, false, or null. So just something, a little side note to keep in mind when you're developing your database schema that you always want consistency more than anything else. So I'm just gonna Google some Shakespearean uh, sonnets and there we go it's plain text sonnets 1 through 50 these are just some very nice poems about all sorts of lovely things uh, and I'm gonna take 11 sonnets I think 9, 10, and 11. Oh good, they're all on one page. So I actually only need one of these guys. Okay, so this is Sonnet 1. Actually, we'll start with Sonnet 11 and then work down. So there's Sonnet 11. Paste that in. Sonnet 10, paste that in, Sonnet 9, of course this could be any text, I'm just picking this because it's free and it's out there, of course we could be searching documents, we could be searching uh, logs, we could be searching anything really. Uh, sonnet, we're down to 7. Now something to keep in mind when you're dealing with the MySQL search engine is that it does not search within words. So you can't um, you can't search within a word. It's only going to it's actually going to break things up in terms of spaces. So if there's like a if there's a an apostrophe within the word, then you're going to probably need some special configuration to handle that. Um, there are some extensions to MySQL that let you do sounding out, uh, but again, you're probably going to have a pretty specialized configuration at that point. And then sonnet number two. Another thing too is that when we're going to be dealing with MySQL search engine, one of the advantages is that it has a scoring feature so that when we uh, do our searches, we can see which is actually the most relevant search result. And this is determined based on the number of times that a particular word appears in that particular row. So if I just paste this in again and I select star from sonnet, I'm going to get all my content back into my table. Doesn't look very good, but I mean we're dealing with a command line here, right? So we're obviously not going to get a perfect uh, display of our data when we're dealing with MySQL's command line tool. <clears throat> 